Alrighty, next game up here is the Giants and the Saints. And hey, our mojo worked, folks. Our mojo worked. Uh, Giants get the first win of the season. They win 27-21. to 21. The offense, it wasn't great for the entire game, but they showed some good spurts of truly what this offense can be. And that's why it's so frustrating because we know what their talent can do on paper. They're just not doing it. But we got some nice glimpses here. And they have a nice walk-off touchdown by Saquon Barkley in overtime. And who is to thank for all this great success for the Giants? Giants? Us! Takes my fans out here. We switched uh, Saquon Barkley's canvas with the Aaron Turtle Rogers canvas. So this man was in main view the entire show because we kind of blocked this one um, over here to our right. We block it for the uh, for basically the, the entire show. You can't see it, but so we were like. Are we cursing the Giants by kind of blocking Saquon Barkley? So we move his canvas to the middle. He's in full view for the entire show. And now they jumpstart the offense. Correlation or coincidence, folks. We're going to call correlation on that one. So well done by the Giants and well done by Saquon Barkley for finally getting on track here. And we'll see if they can keep it up. We don't think so. We hope so. Because this Giants offense has the ability to be at least a top 10 offense in this league. No doubt. No question. They got the quarterback. They had the line. They had the running game. They had the receivers. They had the weapons. Uh, play calling is still now in jeopardy, now in question. But overall, they got the win. So let's celebrate them here and not knock them this week. So. Let's start talking about this Giants team. Daniel Jones goes 28 of 40. Let's get those numbers up here. 28 of 40. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? We got 70% completion percentage. I'll take that all day. 402 yards on 28 completion. This man was airing it out, and that's what we know. We know Daniel Jones can be real gosh dang great as this core, as a quarterback. We can really see him being exactly what Josh Allen is like, folks. I'm I. That's real, really his comp. It's Josh Allen. We just haven't seen it yet but that's truly what he can do and maybe even a little bit better of a dual threat than Josh Allen and we know Josh Allen's got some solid legs not official dual threat quarterback category for Josh Allen uh, but we think Daniel Jones could potentially be up there so, Daniel Jones, 28 of 40, 70% completion percentage, 402 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Ooh, let's see where this interception came from and what the Saints did with it. Interception here came at the end. It was a little bit of a Hail Mary play here at the end of the first half. So, no knock there on Josh Allen for the interception. You're going for a Hail Mary uh, interception. It means nothing. So, kind of a clean game here by this Giants team turnover-wise. So, very well done. Saquon Barkley, 13 carries for 52 yards and a touchdown. The walk-off touchdown there. You got to love it. Daniel Jones ran the ball four times for 27 yards as well. And then let's see who he was throwing to here. Daniel Jones, Kenny Galladay, finally. These receivers coming into their own here. Six receptions for 116 yards for Kenny Galladay. Then we get Kadarius Toney, who we just read the article by Joe Judge, the head coach here for the Giants. He was like, can we get Kadarius Toney more involved in this offense, please? And obviously Jason Garrett either listened or was commanded and demanded to do it but either way we get Kadarius Tony second leading receiver here for the Giants six reception 78 yards so hopefully we can build upon this this man's got some nice speed we'll probably watch all of his plays to truly get a nice gauge and potential what he is uh, doing here offensively and what he can do so we'll probably watch him in our Wednesday film study John Ross, ooh, yes, I love getting him back in the action as well. This is what we're talking about, folks, deep, deep, deep. John Ross is like their fourth, fifth option out here. John Ross, three receptions, 77 yards and a touchdown. Saquon Barkley even getting into the uh, catching game, and he had five catches for 74 yards and a touchdown. Oh, scoring the touchdown in the, on the ground, in the air. True dual threat running back out here, Saquon Barkley. Yes, sir. And then we get Evan Ingram, five catches for 27 yards, and Kyle Rudolph, two catches for 24 yards. So running backs, tight ends, receivers, all getting into the mix here for this Giants team. Now, it wasn't all great here by the Giants. They only put up seven points in the first half, and then they scored a field goal. So they were down 21-10 to 10 going into the fourth quarter, and then it finally took them, you know, how, how, how long into this? Uh, seven minutes left in the fourth quarter is when they truly started to get going and put up the final 11 points that they needed. So we're not 100% sold on this Giants team just quite yet because they're still not scoring early. They're not scoring often and consistently. They're still waiting to the end of the game. So we're not 100% sold on this Giants team, but they got the win. They got the monkey off of their back. Hopefully, they can continue to grow and build off of this like we were talking about with the Jets, but until they do it, we won't fully buy into this Giants team, but it's a nice glimpse of what they can potentially be. 
And then in overtime, just they get the ball first. Uh, I'm sure y'all have seen the coin toss video where the Giants they receive, uh, they end up winning the toss, and the man that called the coin toss goes absolutely wild. Which is, hey, that's exactly how it should be. Yes, sir, we're getting the ball, and we can end the game. We get the chance to end the game because that's always the big kind of discussion after every overtime game. Both teams should be able to possess the ball. Why does a coin flip get to decide the winner of the game? We hear that every single time the an overtime game happens, whether that happens or not in overtime, whether both teams can possess the ball or not we still hear it um so well done by the Giants to take that advantage they got the ball first they took care of business nine plays 80 yards five minutes in overtime to go down and score and then it's Saquon Barkley with the touchdown uh with the walk-off touchdown so Saquon Barkley truly coming into his own here and now we don't want to see any steps back by this Giants offense and Saquon Barkley only can go forward from here and we hope they do it but what a win here by the Giants and truly kind of not going exactly how we had it we had the Saints minus seven we thought this was going to be a blowout by the Saints but once again another lackluster performance here by Jameis Winston in this Saints offense not being good the entire game catching some nice big plays and you know taking advantage but overall not really putting anything decently together once again they only put up seven points in the first half nothing great and then they're second touchdown of the game their first touchdown of the second half it was a 58 yard big bomb to Marquez Callaway which is great Jameis Winston to Marquez Callaway I'm loving that developing but it's not doing it the entire game and we've seen this by the Saints the entire season Jameis Winston finally throwing for 200 yards finally and it was only 226 it wasn't like 270 or even 300 even um who do we just saw um jo or um, not Josh Allen uh Daniel Jones throw 400 yards James Winston, 226 at home. First game back here in two years for, for home fans and still not electric. So what is it going to take for James Winston to finally do what he was doing with the Bucks and letting it fly, cleaning up the turnovers, but letting it fly? He's not getting back there. And you can't go to James, or, and you can't switch to Taysom Hill as the quarterback because this man doesn't have the deep ball. This man shorted a deep ball as hack for an interception, folks. It was after, it was so funny because James Winston comes out at halftime, throws that big bomb that results into a touchdown, so they go up 14-7, and then the very next drive, they have Taysom Hill, and they try to have Taysom Hill hit the deep ball, and he just shorts it, shorts it as hack, and it is an interception, so you can't even go to Taysom Hill. I won't even buy Taysom Hill. I like him as kind of an intermediate passer, but you still need to be able to stretch the field vertically, and that's what James Winston can do. He's got the big, strong arm we've seen it time and time again. But the consistency and just able to move the ball consistently and um, accurately and confidently, he can't do that, at least not in the same system. So we'll see what happens when Michael Thomas comes back, if that affects it at all. But you still have Marquez Callaway that, you know, time and time again has proven, hey, I can get separation downfield and I can catch those deep ball passes. And they're still not kind of doing that multiple times game or figuring how to kind of disguise it so they can go to that multiple times a game. So either way you cut it, Saints lackluster here and truly lost this game. Jameis Winston, I don't know what to make of him. I don't. I think he's scared to throw the picks. I think he knows, hey, if I start throwing pick after pick after pick, regardless if I'm putting up the points and putting up the wins, regardless, it's going to leave a black mark on my, my kind of overall resume my legacy and then the media is just gonna run with it and they will not stop they will not stop with the Jameis Winston interception narratives if that's what he starts doing so I think Jameis Winston is being a way too conservative right here and that overall is hurting the Saints and you can't go to Taysom Hill because because he doesn't have the same arm Jameis Winston has so let's see um, what Jameis Winston has here. 17 of 23. What do we got officially? 73%. That's great. That's so gosh dang great. But only 226 yards. A little lackluster. He had one touchdown. Great. No interceptions. Great. But overall not doing enough to win the game. I mean, look at these slow starts here. We get a turnover on downs. Let's see how what they had on these turnover what they had on this turnover on downs. Their first second drive of the game. So we get a first and 10 at the Giants, 36, a second and eight at the 34, a third and three at the 29, and then they go for it on fourth and three. Alvin Kamara off the left side, and that didn't work. And then they miss a field goal. Then they finally get a touchdown. So, oh, man, I, it's just not consistent. And then Sean Payton tries to get a little cute, and as they're building this momentum, that's when they had the Taysom Hill big throw, and that leads to the interception. Not getting it done in the fourth quarter. 
Unfortunate. So Jameis Winston just not consistent throughout the entire game. Alvin Kamara goes 26 carries for 120 yards. He's doing what he does. Taysom Hill had six rushes for 28 yards and two touchdowns as well, getting it done. And uh, that's what Taysom Hill is good at, you know, getting it done in the red zone, utilizing his, uh, you know, running game and, you know, his deceitful passing game and all that, utilizing that. So well done to Taysom Hill. Besides the interception, the man cannot throw it that deep, folks. All right, and let's see who Jameis Winston was throwing to. Leading receiver, Marcus Callaway. Two receptions for 74 yards, two targets as well. So once again, their their hookup is great. Why why are they not calling more plays for Marquez Callaway, especially when you don't have Michael Thomas, your number one wide receiver? Why are you not just going to Marquez Callaway over and over and over and over again? They've proven that their chemistry is fantastic. All right, Deontay Harris, five receptions for 52 yards. Ty Montgomery, three receptions for 42 yards. Taysom Hill, two receptions for 26 yards. Juwan Johnson, two receptions for 20 yards and a touchdown. Chris Hogan, two receptions, 15 yards. So he's spreading the ball around, which is great, but not getting it done. And it's not resulting in the wins. They're 2-2. Two and two, And, uh, you know, they're kind of floundering against teams that they shouldn't flounder. You should not flounder against the Giants at your home stadium. This should have been a knock. This should have been a... Uh, Hit out of the park home run, folks. It should have been like a 40 to nothing game. Exactly what the Bills game was against the Texans. It should have been that, but it wasn't, and they lose. Unfortunate. So, Giants get the win 27-21. We'll see if they can keep it up here offensively.